Thank you, thank you, thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here because uh, the, as you probably know, the number of health professionals that are interested in learning that what they've been taught was wrong and changing it to better their health, their family's health, or their patient's health is pretty small. It's a lot of people, but the, the percentage is pretty small. One of the really, really big things is that the entire medical and dietetic profession, those two, all of the RDs and all of the physicians, MDDO, are still being taught today in their training things that have been disproven for over 25 years, things in which the majority of the research shows the opposite of what they're being told. And so I never blame somebody for not knowing what they don't know. So a number of things that I'm going to be presenting to you today are going to stretch your, uh, your imagination. And some of them you'll say, oh, that makes sense and, and I'm going to try that. Or maybe I'll look more into it. And others you may say, that's totally ridiculous. So let's take a look at some of the things that we do know, the things that I know, the things that I've used, and how they can help you to better help others, or, or your family for that matter. So the problem is very specific. The problem is diet is still not recognized as something with an unbelievable ability to help healing of almost everything. So there's a lot of beneficial things that can majorly change the outcome of all sorts of different conditions in all sorts of different ages. But people will think, well, the geriatric community, the reason they have fill in the blank, you know, diabetes, heart disease, whatever, is because of their age. Really. So how about if we go to some of the traditional populations that are still eating the way they've been eating for thousands of years and we get you an entire tribe of people that age, 50, 60, 70 years old, and none of them have any of those conditions. It's not because of age. It's because if we do the same thing that's wrong, the longer you do it, the more it pushes you in the wrong direction. That's the only place that age gets in. So those few who wish to understand are continually being confused because what we are being told is a healthy diet is not a healthy diet. So what is a healthy diet? And why do we know it's a healthy diet? I mean, who made it up? Five different people give you five different healthy diets. Who do you, have, who do you believe? Obviously, you listen to all of them, ask them a bunch of questions, listen to their answers to the questions, and based on that feedback, you decide why you want to believe this man or this woman or whoever. But what we're being told right now about a healthy diet is all backwards. Not all backwards, mostly backwards. So, for example, more or less fruit, which is better? More or less meat, which is better? Does sugar really make as much of a difference as they say it is? It does. We'll go over that. Um, whole grains. Are whole grains good for you or whole grains bad for you? Or might they be both good and bad for you? With the wrong dietary changes, the results don't go in the direction we want them to go in. And if you were convinced those were the right dietary changes, because that's what you're taught, then you go, well, all right, diet doesn't work on this. And I see that a lot, by the way, in the holistic field. I see a lot of people that will make a statement, all of this health stuff is nonsense. My best friend and two or three other friends of mine have been vegetarian. They've been on low-fat diets. One died of cancer. The other has cancer. The third one has heart disease. So obviously it doesn't work. Well, first of all, we're all different. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two, vegetarianism is not healthy and a low-fat diet is horribly unhealthy. And so they got what they were doing. So nutritional supplements are promoted by some people. They're fabulous. Other people, they're horrible, they're demonic, they should be outlawed, especially the FDA, because they really don't want us to get healthy. That doesn't make them money. So let's examine some of the rest of the issues. Healthier foods shorten rehab time, and there's no question about that. I've seen that over and over and over again. They support wound healing. They help the body's immune system to fight or avoid infections. And the question is, what are the best foods, and what do we all need to know about them? So. Very, very important to understand that only multi-generational dietary research can have 100% validity. We now know, this has been shown in many different categories, including things that are not dietary, including even you know, things where we find that people that live in more or less sunlight, people that live around more poisons, causes DNA damage that's passed to the kids. So it gets worse and worse and worse from generation to generation. But if you find a group that's been eating those same different foods throughout the year, 
for five generations is what both Price and Pottinger found. Those are two of the world experts. They're not with us anymore. If you can find them eating that way for five generations and they still have perfect health. They get into old age, they're 70s, 80s, 90s, 100 sometimes, uh, and they don't have almost any heart disease, cancer, diabetes, osteoporosis, arthritis. You know, somebody's out there tracking animals and he's 75 years old and he's throwing a, a dead deer on his back and bringing it into town where, you know, we get people and they're, they're, they're 50 and they go, God, I'd have to go to the gym every day to be strong enough to be able to do that. And of course, they didn't have any gyms. So <laughs> we want people that can do something where we can look back multi-generational. So every time we do dietary research that's six months long or three years long and it shows something that multi-generational research shows is wrong, the multi-generational research is correct and the three-year research is wrong. So for example, um, the, the term vegan, people that will never eat anything that had anything to do with animal protein. I don't tell people how they should eat. I mean, that, that's not my job. I'm not, I'm not a dictator. People can eat however they want. Uh, but there are no vegan societies on the planet Earth. Anytime you can find something that somebody's been eating that way for multiple generations, I will accept that that's a healthy way of eating. Um, animal proteins have been demonized to our detriment because we've been eating animal proteins since the beginning of time. That's one of the reasons that people would be able to eat once a day and have energy all day. You can't do that on vegetables because there isn't enough concentrated nutrition. You'd be grazing all the time. And sorry, but we don't have two stomachs. We're not grazers. We are actually omnivores. And the only time they would eat lots of things without any animals is because it wasn't available. You know, winter came, they had no choice, and they would eat whatever could be stored.